So what we're going to do today is show you a trick how to observe and draw better. And we'll do this by activating the right side of our brain. And we're going to do an exercise so you can learn it too. Yeah. So our inspiration comes from this great book, uh, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by... Betty Edwards. Yeah. It's a classic. Um, I we would totally recommend it. And this is, has become basically a standard exercise in teaching art. Um, and it's based on actual brain uh, research that was done already back in the 70s. Um, and it has worked for generations of artists. And we would like to pass it on now to you as well. Yes. So, um, how are you guys? Now that you can hear us, uh, I see we have some uh, viewers who, who joined us before. Hi Tina, hi Pau, hi Isidore, Hello. hi Kim. Nice to see you all again. Yeah, uh, we also have Tom and uh, Miss Olivia. Hello. Uh, Carlos and Mary. Well, so nice to have you here. Yeah, where are you tuning all in from today? I'm always interested, like, where in the globe uh, you are right now with us. Um, it's, a, it's a nice feeling to have, you know, viewers distributed throughout the globe, I would say. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Thank you, uh, Olivia. Uh, I love it as well. <laughs> the pullover? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. All, that's always a hit. <laughs> Well, we have uh, Pepe from Spain. Um, hi, Eleonora, who just joined. We have Lane from Czech Republic. Hello, um, Lane. Anne from Indiana, Washington State. Uh, also, Mary from Indiana. So nice. This is great. Yeah. Louis, hi, from California. Hey, Louis. Yeah, awesome. So, um, if it's your first time here, um, let us tell you. So, first of all, welcome to Lionscapes. Yeah. Um, who we are. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Sonia and this is Gasper. Yeah. Welcome to our channel, Lionscapes. We like to draw and be creative. <laughs> yeah, and we try to do content that goes in that kind of direction. And we do our best to pass it on to others, uh, so to you. And if you haven't been on a live stream before, it's uh, basically this is how it works. Um, you can always ask us questions down on the right side. Um, we'll do our best to give you um, good answers. Yeah. So we also use uh, Super Chat. Uh, there is a button below. If you, if you want, you can also support us for a small donation. Uh, that would mean a lot to us. And we would, of course, invest this money into our development in our channel. Exactly. Yeah. So is there anything that we forget to mention before? Yes. We, you can contact us uh, via Instagram, um, linescapes.drawing, or uh, you can follow us on Facebook. There's also one phenomenal group. Phenomenal. It's amazing. Phenomenal the group. community there is amazing. Very good. I love it. Yeah. My favorite Facebook group. Yeah. It's called Linescapers. Yes. And we share between each other our sketches that we created through these live streams and yeah you give us feedback our work yeah and this is how we give our each other feedback and yeah create awesome content so yeah do join us yes um, wow uh, Michelle thank you for your support that was our Yay. first super chat of the day <laughs> so nice thanks a lot thanks yeah a lot, you're Michelle. amazing um, yeah let, so let's get to it, right? Let's get to it. Okay, so people, today you will need paper. Any kind of paper would, will do. Um, if you have the option, I would suggest having like an A4, um, so uh, an A4 page because we will do two sketches on the same page today for a start. But you know, even if you have a smaller page, bigger page, no worries, you can do it with everything you want. And then all you need is a uh, you know, a fine marker or a pen, basically a pen, you just need a pen. You can also do it with a pencil. Um, it's fairly simple, just something that, you know, has a fine tip. So, because we'll be doing lines today, 
and not so many surfaces. So this is all you need today. Um, if you don't have it yet, go grab it. Um, go grab your favorite drink um, and let's um, start with this exercise. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, tell us if you're ready. For those who just, you know, haven't been here from the start, what we're doing today is an amazing exercise that will help you observe and draw better by activating the right side of your brain. Yes. Okay, so I will switch now to the to the first screen. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so let me get this here organized. Can you maybe I don't know why why I have this switch like that? No, oh, no, I cannot. I don't know. I also don't know what's going on. Yeah, we'll figure this out, I think. Um, can you like insert new new scenes? Ten. Don't worry about ten, that. Ten. Sonia is a technical magician and oh, uh, I think she will figure this out. I'm sweating. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, you can ask us some other questions. Um, glad to answer you. And there's also a very interesting event coming up on Friday and on Wednesday. Um, I will tell you in the end again, because on Wednesday we're going to be painting or drawing on Easter eggs together. So it's going to be a creative exercise where we're going to do something amazing with the Easter eggs. Um, and then on Friday we will give you feedback again on your work. So you can always send us work via Facebook, Instagram, email, whatever. And we will give you feedback live here on Friday. Um, it works like that, you know, we basically take your sketches and, you know, we uh, make some corrections so you can see and give you live feedback. And if you want, you can always give us, um, you know, ask some more questions during the process. Um, cool technical skills, Sonia, Tina uh, is saying. <laughs> it's not, uh, when you're working under pressure, it's usually always a bit more dramatic. Yeah. Okay, let me see. We'll get that sorted out. Do not worry. Yes. The thing is that usually the phone does it by itself and somehow in this moment it doesn't work. Okay, but now we're ready. We are ready. Okay, people. And you know what? You you have now more advantage. We're at disadvantage because that should be like a cool start and we should all start drawing once again and then you saw now what we're going to do. So... Ah. Okay. Okay. So, so basically, let's start. Get your favorite drawing tool ready, right? And now we will have four minutes. Four yeah. minutes, right? Sonia will put on the timer to draw the flower bouquet that uh, I arranged today for you. You know, I took some time, really arranged this bouquet, took some nice photos, <laughs> uh, nice spring, spring. Um, bouquet right there and um, we'll take uh, four minutes to to draw that. So are you ready? Before that, Louis, you rock. <laughs> Thank we you, got Louis. another super chat. So yes, hearts and kisses. Thanks a lot. For you. Now get ready. We've got we'll have four minutes. Okay. Alright. Let's do it. Let's draw the flower bouquet on the right side of the screen. Three, two, one go okay so you don't need to uh don't 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 try to copy what i do you know actually better sonia will even maybe blend away what uh what i'm uh, doing well i can do that i can try to do that uh, okay. should i okay. you think that's better maybe that's better so they don't see what i'm doing so they don't copy it so Meanwhile, I would like to just talk to you and maybe give you some hints and advice how to proceed here. So, in front of you, you have a bouquet of flowers. And, of course, we ask ourselves, what do we see? We see two different kinds of flowers and they have different colors. And also the tulips have two different colors between each other, right? We have this reddish orangey color which transitions slowly into into the the yellow one and then you have the the leaves that are pointy and they are like in this some sort of glass or jar or waste whatever it is we don't see it 
and then it it's all on it lays down on the floor right and try to just focus on those details like what what do you see um, just do it as you would usually draw that kind of object or or still life um, it's really really interesting and quite fascinating to have something that you like to draw and usually we pay a lot of attention of this on this kind of attention um, details because we want to be precise and when you see a flower you also see that oh it has like petals and the connection where the when the green starts and the the bud is positioned or put together and where the flower comes out um, you, you have also a flower that you can draw something like this. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, it's quite interesting, the, the whole composition. And Gaspar, how, how are you doing? How far are you? So I'm, I have a feeling I'm approaching the end, but, you know, not quite sure because I... You, you, all, you all have another minute and 30 seconds. Okay. So yeah, I'm, I'm drawing those tulips, I have to keep looking at the screen. So you still have some time, just maybe add some shade, um, some shading, some textures, uh, try to differentiate between colors and um, yeah, think about the contrast. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm not like super happy with mine, but you know. You can still add some colors maybe, Kasper. Uh, I, I just I'm limiting myself to um, to the line drawings today um, so why uh, because I just didn't prepare any colors <laughs> to be honest but on the other hand um, I think this exercise works way better if we just do line drawings mm. yeah. okay so <clears throat> yeah I actually I just noticed I missed a leaf here and there's another leaf here mm -hmm. yeah um, well I hope you guys are doing fine. Um, I'm like. Can I show what you you're yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. Because go for it. till now I was just hiding it. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. So you can see what I was doing here. Um, you know, it's okay. Well, let me show a bit bigger. Now you can still add something if you see Kashper did it better. I probably didn't, or, didn't do it better. You know. Well, I mean, your skill is that you're a really fast sketcher. Yeah. And that's my superpower. That you is know? your superpower, for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, I would okay. want... Okay. Is it done? All right. The time's up. So how did you guys do? Um, how, 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 how was it to draw a thing actually so rapidly and so fast? Um, the interesting thing for me was that when Sonia blended it in now and I saw it next to the next to the actual photo of the tulips, you know, it was it was okay. But I noticed it was not like the same thing, right? Yeah. Uh it was difficult, says Anne. Yeah. How how are, what do you think? Uh, yeah. post in the comments what what was your impression or just your experience to do something like this in four minutes? And also, uh, what did you draw or what did you focus your attention on? Yeah, um, we'd be also interested later on, we'd hope you will post it so we can see the, the before and after um, exercise. Because right now, um, as a next step, we will draw these tulips again, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I prepared like two squares on my piece of paper. Um, and you can do it on another page and you can do it next to it if you still have some space but um, we will go uh, into the right side of the brain okay so I'm gonna read a few comments so Tina said it was a nice motif also good to see how Gashper started to draw uh, I followed his way using just a pen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Agnet I focused on the flower mm -hmm, yeah I, uh, Tina said then I started just I started just the blooms, later added leaves. Yeah. Okay. Kim, I have a tendency to want to capture all the details, mm -hmm. so I had to generalize some of the shapes and forms. All right. Okay, good techniques, right? Yeah, I think this is always legit. If you don't have time, you start generalizing. 
Mm. Um, and what I also noticed is like I started with the flowers as well. I just started, went to this one, you know, how's it called? Daffodil? I think it's, is it a daffodil? I think if, if it's a daffodil, please confirm. If it's not a daffodil, please correct. Um, Narcissus. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, um, and I went for Daffodils. the daffodil, I went for this one daffodil and, you know, then we'll continue from there. Or I think I went to the tulip, I don't know, which just started with one flower. And, um, you know, now if you blend in again the picture, let's, uh, yeah, thanks. If, yeah, let's, let's compare what, what I draw, what I drew. And you can also compare it to yours. So, you know, I'll just move it a bit further up so you can see. So yeah, I mean, you see it's a flower bouquet, right? Kind of. I mean, it's maybe the same, but it's not really, you know, it's, of course it's okay, but it's not like exactly the same thing that we see on the right side. Do this with your drawings as well. Like, is it, how close is it to the actual thing? Um, and now we're going to do an exercise to show you how you can basically do it to make it look exactly or as close as possible to the real thing, okay? And we'll be doing this by activating the right side of the brain, as I said, and um, we will focus on something called the negative spaces. Okay. All right, Sonia, so what are we looking at? Um, <clears throat> we're looking at negative spaces. So, um, oof, before that, when I was reading and preparing for this, it, it was a bit um, easier. So maybe you need to help me a bit. Sure. Um, so, so actually, this is um, if you see on the right side is our photo, right? And on the middle, you see the outline of the flower bouquet which we were drawing. And this is called like the positive space. You know, this is the shape of the the shape of the of the bouquet. And on the left side, you see everything black around it. This is the negative space. So everything that is not the bouquet is the negative space. Okay. So again, in the middle, the positive space, and on the left, the negative space. And what we're going to do now we're going to focus on drawing the negative space around the bouquet. Okay, we'll blend it out now. If you have any other questions, just ask in the comments, but I hope this was clear enough. Um, so we can go back to our drawing board and we will have another four minutes to draw the bouquet again. But this time, not focusing on the bouquet, but watching the everything that is not the flowers and the glass. Watching the shapes, the forms and tracing them out, right? So the outline is already negative space and the spaces between the flowers. All right, that sounds okay. spooky. <laughs> so they get another four minutes, right? They get another four minutes. I get another four minutes as well. And you can start. All right, let's go. I will draw, let's say, I will really try to focus. I started somewhere, you know, and I try to draw everything that is not the bouquet. Right. Thanks, Sonia just gave me the photo a bit bigger so I can better like do this. No, it might be, it might not be that good. But I have a feeling that it will be interestingly better. Yeah, interesting because when you're drawing the outline, you notice how many different, you know, shapes and twists and turns there are basically to this. And you can take more time than Gaspar. So as I mentioned before, Gaspar can draw very fast. Yeah, don't don't stress. Don't don't stress. Like if you and. What we want you to do, that's why you, you got four minutes. You can really focus on that outline, on this negative space. Because the, the outline is the border between this positive and the negative space. 
And the negative space is basically everything what surrounds this main object that we're focusing on. But this time, just focus on the spaces between that object. That's the main task. We don't want you to think about the flower buds, the leaves, the colors. Just leave that away. I see even in between, you know, there see there's some like empty spaces in between. You know, I see there's another hole here. Right, then there's another small one there. So my proportions maybe are not like totally on the spot, but I think Okay, I'm gonna switch this. But one. I think I like it. Camera? Quite a lot. Okay, you switch back to me. Hello. Yeah. Um, how are you doing? You can also correct it a bit, you know, if yeah. there's something when he's correcting, I corrected this part here. You know, it's not so, not, not so. Uh, you still have a minute and, and a half. Yeah, yeah. Take your time. I might have rushed it, I think. But uh, you can learn from my mistakes and take more time. So, man, this is a beautiful bouquet. If it doesn't work out with. Uh, you arranged it very nicely. Yeah. You know, if it doesn't work out in life with teaching, drawing, I will just become a florist. Yeah. I always loved putting, like, bouquets together. This is like picking in and out the flowers for a bouquet. I yeah. always loved that. Yeah. It's just such a beautiful thing to do. Okay. We are nearly done. Yeah. You have 50 minutes, 50 seconds to go. Yeah, so don't bother, don't, you know, stress yeah. with the details inside at this point. We'll just do the outlines in the yeah. negative spaces. Think about the shapes. Where, where are the edgy shapes and where are just the straight lines? Yeah. Maybe I can, you know, add here like this. Outline like that. This is nice. I hope you're having fun because this is a totally different way of thinking for me. Pretty, pretty cool, I would say. For those of you who might have joined us right now, um, late at some later point, what we are doing is we are drawing negative spaces of this bouquet here. And why are we doing this? Because we are activating the right side of our brain. And the time is up. The time is up. You know, pen, you know put the pencils down, throw them out of the window. Uh, but keep the piece of paper. <laughs> okay, I'll put it down as well. Bam. Okay. So, um, let's compare again what I drew and what you drew to the what we drew before. Right? Um, let's try it out. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Anne said, this is fun. Okay, and I'm glad. Tina also mentioned, she also said, for me, this is a different approach of observing. Pencil down. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's go. So, this was basically step one. You know, it's like, okay, you can see it's the bouquet, but in terms of a form, because I was focusing on the flowers and everything and daffodils and tulips, <laughs> but this thing, this thing is much closer to the thing on the right. You know, I see one mistake. You know, this tulip here should have been bigger. This outline, this is where I started and maybe I got carried away and finished on the other side. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the proportions were challenging, but I, I think everything that's supposed to be there is there. And I think it's much better than before. Okay, so maybe at this point we can also mention, mention why this technique is so amazing and tell you a few fun facts about it. Yes. And we usually have this skill or we had it when we were children. Mm -hmm. So children have more, a kind of more better feeling for intuition. And for that, for them, everything is, has the same importance. So when they go outside to play, everything is fascinating. Like the sky is great and the ducks and the, the river and the branches and the trees, everything has the same meaning for them, everything is equal. And when we go to this adolescent phase, 
because of the information that we get, we learn how to read, um, how to just think about stuff and things. Through that, we live or we just, yeah, we forget this ability and it became becomes more do dormant. And But still the artists, they usually do, when they start sketching, they don't start with just one object, but they focus first on the negative space. And because they focus on negative space, exactly that happens what also Gaspar said, that the proportions in his case were better. You can notice this here as well. If you see how this, this outline is sitting in the frame, it looks much better than it looked before. Yeah, it's much closer to the actual thing. It's yeah. not perfect, and it won't be perfect in your case, but if you compare it to the first one, much closer to the actual form of the object. Yeah. And your your flowers, your your um, petals, petals, petals have also better proportions. Yeah. Everything looks, I think so. looks like yeah. it's it's more balanced yeah. and not so like condensed together. So, you know, um, if you didn't manage to finish it or something, don't stress. This was just, you know, to get us into this, um, to this kind of task. Um, I would suggest we, um, do, should we fill it out with the details? Um, I think that was meant for the other exercise okay. and I would suggest we do that. Okay, so um, what about I explain them about what just happened to their brain? We can do that as well. Maybe I read a comment before. Do it. So we said, uh, nice, fun, challenging to get the proportions. Then Miss Olivia, I think I focused too much on the individual spaces between the flowers mm -hmm. and leaves and not enough at the bouquet as a whole. Mm -hmm. Louis, did contour ends is very abstract. All right. Yes, this is also how it, look, it should look like. Exactly. Okay, so Gaspar. You wanted to explain to us how, how this is influencing our brain. Exactly. Mm. Even if it's not looking good right now, you just made a step into a good direction of training your right side of the brain to observe and also training your hand to follow that. So I will show you what I mean. Basically, when... Should I switch yeah. something? Switch to Caravaggio. Yeah, Caravaggio. Caravaggio. All right. There is my Caravaggio. Yeah. So there is the lute player from Caravaggio. And what I wanted to say is, when we look at this person on the right side, right? Um, you can put on my paper. I will show. Yes. If I wanted to draw this person, what I would basically do, as my, normally, as someone thinking with the left half of the brain, would look at this person and would say, oh, look, this is a person and it has, the person has a lute. And if I want to draw it, my brain would go, oh, okay, head. You know, draw the symbol for head. I would have a head. You know, then my brain would go, oh, the head has two eyes. And would go two eyes. And then would go, okay, the head has a nose and mouth. Oh, it has some hair. And, you know, it has this thing. And it's, you know, okay, it's holding a lute. What's the, lute is basically a guitar. My brain would simplify and would say, okay, yeah, some sort of guitar. You know, okay, funny guitar, but guitar. <laughs> right, okay, so it has one hand here. You know, I cannot really draw hands, but okay. And it has one hand here. Okay, yeah, like that. And there is like some book in front. Okay. And there is some, you know, another violin. Okay, how do you draw a violin? Uh, uh, something like that. So, what just happened? Our brains, when looking at this, go, okay, look, the head of the person, so let's do a symbol for a head. And this is the simplified sy symbol for the head, and our brain is lazy and likes to use simplified symbols. Okay, you know, uh, violin, oh, this is some, you know, violin looks something like this. Yeah, good enough. I will, I will take it, says the brain, you know. Book, ah, okay, the book is, you know, usually something opened. Like this, couple of pages. And, yeah. And this is how our brain registers the painting. And this gets off in our way of really drawing it as it is. So that's why we have to trick our brain into 
not looking at the person with the loot, but looking at the shapes and forms. And if and we do this by drawing the negative space. And if I went around and even you know I want to I'll try to draw as fast as I just did, but just draw the outlines of this, you know, guitar player. Even you know, just drawing the outlines and focusing on these things. I, I will just start with the guitar. You know, by that, you know, then the hand will go down here already, see. But just drawing the outlines of the shapes, I will get a much, much more accurate depiction of basically what is going on. So this is great for copying, um, for copying other images or for drawing from observation. You know, this is uh, here, it goes like this, okay. Probably the proportions are not going to be 100% correct, but they will be much, much better. You know, I even got the tilt of the head this time, right? Yeah, Carlos said, very interesting technique. Yeah. <laughs> so now I would, in the next phase, you know, I would like, you know, draw in the details and everything, but this already helped me, you know, do a much better outline than the one before, right? Okay. So, if you have any questions to this, um, you can gladly ask, and this is, you know, how the, how the brain works, and this is how we trick it to observe and draw better. So, if we would do it once again, just very fast, we have in our brain a library of symbols that we already know and because of that every time we see some new object or something that we would like to draw our head our left hemisphere immediately goes oh this is yellow this is this is texture this is hand this is these are the eyes these are the lashes or the hand and that's why you always do the same gestures and that's why you always do the same symbols and through that what we just showed you this exercise can influence that you, it will just break this habit of always going to your personal mind library and mm -hmm. taking the symbols out. So, we would like to do now another example. We prepared another um, another object that yeah. we're gonna draw together. It's a bit comp more complicated than the flower bouquet, but now we also have more time and we will slowly and carefully uh, trace the outlines of it yeah. or the negative spaces. And uh, thank you, Anne, for your donation. Thanks so much, Anne. Mwah. Mwah. Um, thank you for your support. Yes, we appreciate it. Okay, are you ready for the second part? For yeah. the second drawing? Any questions before we start? Um, if not, get another piece of paper. I'll just turn mine around here. And, um, you know, we, we'll take more time now, right? I'm not sure. I think we can still stay at four minutes because we explained everything in all the steps and I think you're up for this challenge. You sure? Yes, I I'm think I'm not sure. Are. I'm up for the challenge. Ah, Kasper, you <laughs> underestimate yourself. You can do it. I believe in you. It's a quite a complex view. Okay, I'll, I'll do my best. If, you know, do we get an extension if we not manage it? Yes, of course we do. Thank yeah. you. If you don't manage it, then I will give our viewers a few extra minutes of time and we'll of see. course you need to shout if you're not ready to continue you just say no Sonia stop okay let's go let's go okay not the loot player so oh you don't want to do the loot player no. anymore yes ah the chair the beautiful chair yes. this is another photo I took for you today I arranged it especially I arranged the chair um, <laughs> in a special position that it's super hard to draw <laughs> and look at it yeah look at the negative spaces around it yeah. right focus on the negative spaces around the chair see how it outline the outline around it the negative spaces in it you see you have it's a lot it has a lot of these parts uh, the, a lot of um, you know sticks or sticks I think there are sticks well, chair parts, chair limbs, and we draw the negative spaces between the chair limbs. I totally made these chair limbs up, probably. Okay, I think we need to start. You're talking too much. So, 
let's just start. I'm gonna set the timer and no. you should start now. All right, let's roll. Okay, so for a bit of help, I'm gonna just give you a moment or two to start drawing with Kasper, but I strongly recommend that you focus on your own chair because through that you're gonna notice um, your own parts that are important for you. All right. Okay, Tina said, can we improve the perception by repeating this exercise, like training the brain as a muscle, just repeating the patterns of thinking? Yes, um, this is also how the artists are doing it. They are just practicing and repeating those elements so long that they have a library of elements in their heads that they can just use all the time then again. Um, and also with this exercise, of course, you can do the same. Especially if you want to, to get to learn a new symbol, um, that's, that's best probably for, for learning new symbols. Yeah, that's how you fill your head with actual real, yeah. you know, actual symbols. And when you draw, a, let's say, a difficult thing, like a person in perspective, super difficult, um, it's just a simple method of not focusing on the person, but just focusing on these shapes, the negative spaces, and you know how the shapes relate to each other. Yeah, and this is also a technique that all artists, like the the yeah the the, the classical artists at least, use. Um, they never start with the main focus on the object, but they start to defining the the negative space. So they think more about, but more, very intuitional. Like they don't think about it. Oh, now I'm gonna work on the negative space, and I'm gonna focus on this and this. But they always start with basic shapes and basic forms, and they try to position them or arrange them on the piece of paper or on the. They try to position them in the context of the border or the, of the frame that they are using, and after that they start adding um, forms. They try to add the outline first or just a few first lines that, that can guide them. And then afterwards they start adding the details. And this is amazing how well this is working for me right now. I'm totally surprised. Now, and this is, I have to admit, I didn't know this technique before. Basically, I learned it a couple of days ago through this book, you know, to be completely honest. But uh, with talking to Sonia about it, uh, preparing today's workshop, I noticed that I learned it by myself intuitively, um, but only for drawing landscapes. This was amazing. You know, I told you before that I'm really bad at drawing, um, at drawing faces. And this is probably because I haven't realized that, you know, I can apply this, this thing, this method to drawing, um, to drawing faces and people as well. Hi, Dom, who just joined. Today we're drawing negative spaces. So if you want, you can just start following what Kasper is doing. He's tracing the outline or the negative space of this chair. So he's not focusing on the background or the chair itself, but he's trying to define the outline of this chair and the negative spaces, so the empty spaces between the chair elements. And these are our four minutes. I'm gonna give you two more minutes. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. <laughs> You're very good students. <laughs> In art class, mm -hmm. when you know when I in the school, I we totally skipped art class. It was so bad. But also the teacher was a bit indecisive. Maybe I hope I hope he's not listening. But he, if if he is, I'm really honored. But <laughs> anyways, <laughs> we were so bad because um, we just wanted to play basketball instead of art. We were just like, oh, I want to go play basketball, and he was like, okay, and let us go. You know, play basketball. Okay, I messed up one thing, but yeah, this is supposed to be like this, yeah. 
Yeah, but you know, I mean, all things considered, all things considered, it's this looks quite man. nice. It looks quite good. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm positively surprised. Yeah. Um, but uh, do you think if you would want to add some more and details like yeah, um, three dimensionality, uh, would you? start adding that in the next phase or do you think this element this chair is a bit too small i would i would add it maybe so i mean i draw it quite small but still i mean maybe maybe we can try it together when everyone is finished then maybe yeah. in the second phase we can try to add some small details that would yeah serve like one extra step yeah exactly so first let's don't focus on the details on the chair just the outlines um and then we'll we'll add some some extra stuff um anyways where was i i just wanted to say that um, this technique yeah i just learned it i will be using it a lot i you know advise you to use it and practice it as well i think we will learn together from mm -hmm. it quite a lot yeah so uh radka said Wow, this was really hard, but helpful. Yeah, okay, I'm glad. How did you yeah. do? How did the rest of you do? How was, uh, how was the chair? And our time is up, so pencils down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, uh, leave us a comment in the chat so that we know what was your experience, mm -hmm. how far did you come, do you need still some additional time, or was this that close enough? You're nearly finished. Yeah. For those of you who are finished, we can now go and add, you know, some small details of the chair. Because we've just drawn the outline. And no, the chair doesn't have many details, but you know, we can you can draw some lines in it now because you know it's not just the outline, but it actually has this sticks, yeah. right? Limbs. Okay, so I will put you back to the top down. Putting back on the top down. Alright. So you know, basically when I look at the chair. For those of you who already are so far, like inside, I can see now that now I can add, you know, more of these details. I can see this, you know, has, yeah, there's this line, you know, basically it's just filling in more lines, you know, like this here. Maybe you can also close some, close some yeah, lines, right? I have to close lines, basically. This wow. is what I'm doing. Well, this is amazing. To be honest, like, you know, closing this here. Yeah, now this also has like a visible face. Now basically here there's a line. Wow, now, now the chair and okay, these are actually these all run through. So imagine now if you would draw something like this with a pencil and now you would uh, in the second step you would start uh, going over it with a pen or with fine liner or anything similar, you would get like a really nicely sketched chair. Yeah. Okay, so we got some comment comments. Michelle, it was a good place to start. Doing the negative space took my mind off of the difficulty of the many angles. That's yeah. true. Yeah, that's a good point. That helped me as well. Tina said, chair looks a bit crooked, but all in all, in a good proportion. Very good. <laughs> Very cool to see how I perceive perspective. Uh, Christina uh, said, when I first saw the chair, I felt overwhelmed and lazy, but, this, but then this method simplified the task and my brain felt relaxed, easy and focused. Wow! We, we were hoping to hear something like this because for us as well, this was like really revolutionary, revolutionary uh, method or something. Yeah, definitely. And Anne said, I like to see how Gaspar does it. My chair is lop lopsided, but I can see it is, is a chair. Ah, okay, I can see it's a chair. Whoa, Carlos. Carlos, thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> we really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope, you know, that my amazing chair, uh, <laughs> this is the price for my amazing chair. He also give a, gave us a comment. He said, whoa, excellent work. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Carlos. I hope you and everyone else get some value 
out of this exercise. Yeah. And this is like the point. For me, it was also taking my mind off of the complexity of the chair, which would, by the way, completely overwhelm me normally. Yeah. And, um, and uh, let me focus on these negative spaces. It was, in a way, also a bit, you know, relaxing. And, yeah, what I don't even know, you know, what's happened subconsciously, it activated my right brain hemisphere, mm. which benefits, you know, me in all life situations. And it will benefit you as well, you know, activating it as often as possible helps you find creative solutions to problems or just, you know, come up with art ideas and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so would you would you like to explain something more about the chair or I have a few comments still yeah. to read? Um, so, Tina said, I joined those two steps and the result is not so good. Should have kept to just the negative. Old brain perceive kicked in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. principle kicked in and then Louis says said at least it looks like a chair very good thank you <laughs> yeah okay okay let me show you again my finished chair yeah we would like to show it yeah I like to show it now I'm proud of it um, so what I did I also added you know here I closed the lines added these different faces and I struggled with the same thing Tina probably did, you know, left brain hemisphere kicked in and said, ah, oh, you know, oh, this is a, you know, the stick looks like this and, you know, everything looks like that. And I had to struggle, but I think I managed it more or less. Um, yeah, it's definitely something I will be doing now more often as an exercise. But this is just the beginning, right? Today you did a chair, tomorrow you can do a house. After that, you can do the whole city. Yeah. Imagine and, the possibilities. And, you know, for next week, just, you know, send us that Caravaggio painting copy um, in oil. I think uh, seven days time should be possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we really hope you enjoyed the exercise. Yeah, we can once again um, recommend this book. This is, uh, this is some of, of source we will be using one of several sources and also our own experience mm -hmm. we'll be using for these creative exercises every Monday. And we invite you, you know, to stay uh, with us, not just on Monday, but also on the next live events. Yeah, yeah and as we said before, um, do share your drawings with our Facebook group or yes. post it at least in our Instagram uh, profile so that and we can... Us. Yeah, and tag us so that we can see how how did you do, uh, because we're just curious. Very curious. And if you want just to compare your stuff a bit, then yeah, Facebook group is the perfect place to be. Yeah, it's linked in the description, right? Yeah. Right, Lionscapers, go there, we'll confirm you. Well, Klaus Herrmann, thank you very much. <laughs> we got another super Thank you, Klaus. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I should start like drawing cards for everyone yeah. to get, right? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the support. Thank you. I'm glad you we had you uh, with us again. And for the next stream, Sonia, when are they? Okay, so uh, this is the schedule for our next stream. Wow, Tina, thank you. <laughs> we also got another super chat from Tina. Thank you for teaching us something new. Great lessons and great vibes. Thank you. We appreciate it a lot. Um, so this is the schedule for this week. So today is the Monday. We did that. So on Wednesday, we're gonna do a creative challenge Easter eggs. Right, so prepare some boiled eggs or, you know, blown out eggs or whatever they're called. And um, yeah, you know, we'll get a bit creative with Easter eggs. Yes, and then on Friday, uh, we're gonna look at your drawings again. So do send us drawings on Facebook, on Instagram. You can just, the stuff you post in the Facebook group, if you want, just say, you know, for Friday. So we know we'll take it on Friday, we'll take a closer look at it mm -hmm. and, you know, comment. And I think even those who are not sending in drawings, you know, will get value from it. Yeah. And we appreciate everyone who's courageous enough to send us some of the work. You'll get direct feedback from us. I think that's of a great value. Yeah, that's true. So we wish you a great day or yes. a great evening. 
exactly. We hope you stay safe all in these times. And we really glad and hope we see you. Wow, we got another super chat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Wow, we're doing such a good job today. Thank you. That means a lot. Especially for that kind of contribution, we really know that we're giving our best and it means a lot to um, just to see this appreciation from your side as well. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Thanks a lot, everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, big heart. Um, and yeah, thank you, uh, Miss Olivia. She said, uh, thank you so much. It was the highlight of the morning. Oh, wow. Christina, thanks for the class and the tips. Super helpful. It was fun and congrats from Isidore. Yes, I mean, you're so amazing. Thank you for staying here with us uh, for this hour. We, we're gladly, we're gladly do it. And yeah. And big hearts. Yeah, and kisses. big hearts. Big hearts and kisses. Keep on drawing. And see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.